Uh, so the next question uh, asks us to evaluate the limits of uh, this function, right? So they graphed out a function for us and they told us to evaluate the limits for A, B, C, and D and calculate its asymptote. Okay, um, so let's calculate A first. So A and B are calculating the end behaviors of these functions. And end behaviors of, of functions basically correspond to horizontal asymptotes, if there are any, okay? So when we are talking about end behaviors, we want to we want to see what where the function uh, tends towards when it approaches infinity or negative infinity. Okay, so that's what we'd call end behaviors. And they get their um, moniker end behaviors because we're evaluating the limit as they approach infinity. Okay, so the limit as f x approaches infinity of f of x. So we're going to look at our right side here, right? So we're going to see that our function is actually tending towards this value of negative two here. And we can see here because it's starting to slope down, but it never touches uh, the horizontal asymptote of negative two. Okay. And for sure, we can say, oh, how about later in the graph uh, when um, maybe it crosses over, but we don't have that vision here. So we're just going to say that it approaches negative two as for now. Um, a better way of calculating end behaviors is actually to have the function itself and evaluating the limit of that function. But here we're only given the graph, so we have to use what we can. Okay, so we're going to say that as x approaches positive infinity, the function tends towards negative two. Okay, so let's evaluate the end behavior of the function in the other way. So limit of x as it approaches negative infinity of f of x. Okay, so we see here that the function is now approaching two from the left-hand side. So as the function keeps going, it increases and increases and increases, but then it slowly decreases and it doesn't really touch uh, uh, y equals two. So we're gonna say that the left be end behavior of our function is two, okay? So now we're gonna talk about vertical asymptotes. So, in any location on the graph where the, the uh, function tends towards infinity or negative infinity, we call those to be vertical asymptotes. So we see here that the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x, uh, we see here that at x, uh, at x equals 1, that our function uh, approaches infinity from both sides. And this is important. The function has to approach infinity from both sides of the asymptote. Okay. Uh, a very good example of, uh, of, of this ex of an exception is the reciprocal function, right? So if we were to have, let's say, um, if in our notes here, f of x equals one over x, right? If we were to graph that out, that would look like something like this, right? Right. So we know that a vertical asymptote here is x equals zero. But we see here from the left-hand side and the right-hand side, that the function approaches infinity and negative infinity. So they're tending away from each other. So this is a very important note about uh, limits itself, is that if they are both approaching infinity from both sides, then we can say that the limit as x approaches one of f of x is infinity, okay? And the, um, the notation for uh, from the left side and the right side are, is this, okay? So if the limit as x approaches one, so we put the negative as a like uh, exponent, but we keep it on the left-hand side. So this means that as x approaches one from the negative side, so from the left-hand side. So we see here that this corresponds to this function approaching one from the negative side, okay? Of f of x, all right? So the right-hand side, as you guys might suppose, is as x approaches uh, one pause, I actually believe it's, like this, okay? So this means that the function is approaching one from the right-hand side, okay? So that means it's approaching from here. If they both equal the same thing, maybe infinity, then they, the limit exists, okay? In this case here, the limits are approaching different infinities, right? So from the right-hand side, it's approaching positive infinity, and from the left-hand side, it's approaching negative infinity. So that limit does not exist, okay? So let's apply this thinking with the final part. So the limit as x approaches three 
of f of x. Okay, so let's see uh, as x, when x approaches three from the left hand side. So if x approaches three from the left hand side, we see here that it's tending toward negative infinity, right? It's it's increasing, it's accelerating, and it's increasing, and it's increasing, and it's increasing, and it looks like it's tending towards negative infinity. Okay. What about the limit of our uh, other function? Okay, does it does it also uh, tend towards negative infinity or no? Okay, let's see. So as you see from the right hand side, our function as it comes and approaches x equals three, it starts to tend towards negative infinity too. That means that the limit as x approaches three of f of x is negative infinity. Okay. So after we finish these examples, they're asking us to find the equations of the asymptotes. And these are very good examples to uh, ex explain what asymptotes are. So asymptotes are basically um, equations, line equations that express uh, the behaviors of functions, basically. So the horizontal asymptotes relate to the end behaviors of functions, while the um, vertical asymptotes uh, speak to uh, lines of discontinuity of functions itself. Okay. So lines of discontinuity are like x equals 1 and x equals 3. These vertical asymptotes are parallel to the y-axis, and they have equations of x equals blah, blah, blah. Okay? While the vertical asymptotes um, have equations are parallel to the x-axis and have equations of y equals um, whatever the value of the horizontal asymptotes are, right? So they describe the behaviors of the functions, and they describe where the functions, what the functions are restricted to. Okay, so for the given graph, the horizontal asymptotes have um, y equals 2 and y equals negative 2. So if we were to draw a horizontal line parallel to the x-axis from negative 2 and 2, we can see that the end behaviors of these functions never touch uh, y equals 2 or y equals negative 2, okay? At some point, the function does equal 2 or negative 2, but horizontal asymptotes relate to the end behaviors of these functions, okay? So while, on the other hand, the vertical asymptotes relate to lines of discontinuity of our, um, uh, of our function. So these are values of x where the function does not exist, okay? So, um, in this case, we have two, and that is x equals one. So x does not belong, x equals one does not belong in our domain on our function, as we can see here by looking at our uh, function itself, the graph. We can see here that our functions are tending towards one, but they never exist, or they equal infinity at one, right? In the same way, uh, x equals negative, uh, x equals three is also in our vertical asymptote. They describe that at this point, our function tends towards infinity, okay? So the junior tutor also gives us another way of describing vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. So the, and to identify vertical asymptotes on a graph, look for parts of the graph that appear more and more like a vertical line as the distance from the x-axis increases, okay? So the vertical asymptotes will be the functions where it looks like a vertical line, or horizontal asymptotes are the parts of the functions that will look like a horizontal line. So that's another way to, uh, I guess, geometrically think about things for uh, horizontal and vertical asymptotes, okay? Other than that, these solutions are correct. These solutions are correct, and we can move on. Okay. All right, so uh, question number seven,